welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We're continuing our Big Ten football predictions today, and our next team loses their star running back and loses some playmakers on the defensive side of the ball, but still have the talent to compete in the Big Ten East. They are the Penn State Nittany Lions. Penn State was so close to having an undefeated regular season last year. They lost back-to-back -back games by a combined four points. The first coming to Ohio State on the road where they blew a 15-point fourth quarter lead and ended up losing by one point. And the week after that, they faced a three-and-a-half-hour weather delay before losing on the road to Michigan State uh, by a field goal as the Spartans kicked a game-winning field goal as time expired to lose 27-24. to But those were the only two losses for the Nittany Lions. They went on to face Washington in the Fiesta Bowl and ended up winning that game 35-28. to So obviously a thrilling game there and obviously an 11-win season. So that's still pretty good for James Franklin and the Nittany Lions. But they do lose... The big running back in Saquon Barkley, uh, the number two overall pick in the NFL draft. They lose some defensive playmakers, uh, only return three on that side of the ball, but they do get back uh, Trace McSorley, their big-time quarterback, dual-threat quarterback, coming back to try to get back to the Big Ten Championship game. They certainly could do that. McSorley is just 1,089 yards from breaking Christian Hackenberg's record to be the all-time leading passer in Penn State history. He has the wide receivers that can help get him there with DeAndre Tompkins and Juwan Johnson, the second-leading receiver from last season, and they have four offensive linemen returning, so it's going to be a lot of protection for McSorley to make the plays that he needs to do in the pocket there. Now on defense, that's my biggest concern for this Penn State team. They only returned three there and are fairly thin in terms of where their returning starters are laid out. They have two returning starters along the defensive line led by Sharif Miller, they have one returning uh, starter on the linebacking core and zero returning starters in the secondary. So they do have some experience there, some juniors, maybe a couple seniors that weren't starters last year but did play, uh, but none that started full time. So that's going to be uh, my biggest concern for Penn State going into this season. They open up the season against Appalachian State, and some people have already started rumoring that this could be the next Appalachian State versus Michigan that we saw in 2007. I don't see that happening. So a win for Penn State here shouldn't have much of a problem. Uh, against the Mountaineers there. Uh, and then at Pittsburgh, this was the game that really kept Penn State out of the college football playoff two years ago when they went on the road to Pittsburgh and lost 42-39. to Now, we didn't know it at the time. We didn't know that was going to keep Penn State out of the college football playoff, but then later they ended up beating Ohio State, and that's what really sent them off the edge. It really took them high into the rankings, and you know when you can't help but look back and just think, man, if they had just beaten Pittsburgh, they would have been in the college football playoff because they ended up winning the Big Ten Championship that year. This year, Pittsburgh, though, high after that uh, upset win over Miami to, to close out the season, but missed out on a bowl game. They returned Kenny Pickett, the one who led uh, the Panthers to that win over Miami. I just don't see Penn State going on the road and losing this game, though. Pittsburgh has a very, very strong defense, so if they can rattle Trace McSorley, if they can shut them down because they're not going to have a super strong running game, they're going to be led by Miles Sanders, but he didn't do much production led with because of Saquon Barkley on the team. Uh, but I, if they can shut that offense down, maybe Pittsburgh gets another big upset over the Nittany Lions this year. I'm just not seeing it, though. I think Penn State's going to have enough offense to override that Pittsburgh defense. The Pittsburgh offense, I don't think it's going to have enough. Yes, they have Kenny Pickett, but I think you know he's still going to be pretty young coming into this game. It's only week two, and despite Penn State only returning three starters, I think they'll be able to get the job done. A win over Pittsburgh, a win over Kent State. They start Big Ten play on the road to Illinois on a Friday night, uh, and that's going to be a big game for them, uh, more so for Illinois than it's going to be for Penn State. It's going to be good to get a 1-0 start in conference. Illinois returning 16 starters. Most of those starters from last year were freshmen. Illinois is a very, very young team, and if you go back and watch one of my older videos, I have Lovey Smith on the hot seat this year. He has done nothing uh, with Illinois during his time there. And, and a lot of it's just due to talent. You've got to build up a team. And this is, you know, if they let him stay there for a couple more years, he's building up a team here. A lot of this team's going to be led by sophomores and some younger freshmen, and they could be, end up getting better and get into a bowl game in the future. I don't see Penn State going on the road and losing this game despite some of the experience Illinois might have. So another win there. And that's going to give them eight days to prepare for the big showdown against Ohio State that's going to have huge implications uh, nationally for college football playoff resumes and in the Big Ten standings. Now, two years ago, back in Happy Valley, that's when Penn State upset Ohio State. Had that blocked field goal and ended up upsetting the Buckeyes there. And last year, they nearly beat the Buckeyes again, losing 39-38. to So it was obviously uh, a heartbreaker there. And I think had they not lost that, I don't think they would have lost to Michigan State either. I think that really put a uh, hurt on their drive, uh, on their morale uh, that Ohio State lost to. But this year, they're back at home. Uh, they're, they're angry after that loss, that, that blown lead they had against Ohio State. And I'm going to give Penn State the win here because 
of home field advantage. And I have a lot of faith in Trace McSorley. I think they're going to have a big day against this Ohio State defense that returns five starters there. And I think the defense of Penn State is going to be able to contain Dwayne Haskins, the starting quarterback for the Buckeyes. James Franklin's going to have this team fired up for this game. And I think they get a big-time win over the Buckeyes here. I know a lot of people might not think that just because of the inexperience on the Penn State defense. But I think, you know, they're going to be, what, five games in, four games in uh, coming into this Ohio State game. They're going to be able to start uh, clicking by this point. And they're going to be 5-0 and going into their bye week. A huge, huge win over the Buckeyes. A bye week going into Michigan State, which is also at home. They lost to Michigan State on the road last year in a heartbreaking fashion, much like they did to Ohio State. Now, I'm going to give Penn State another win here over one of the better teams in the Big Ten East because of the bye week that they have in preparation, because of the revenge factor on what happened last year. I really do like this Michigan State team with 19 returning starters, 10 on offense, 9 on defense. I love their quarterback and Brian Lewerke. I think he's getting better, uh, has gotten better every season. He's been the starter for the Spartans. They have LJ Scott, a solid running back there. But once again, a week of rest, riding high after a big win over Ohio State. I think Penn State gets another big win over uh, Michigan State here. And then they go on the road to Indiana, who also returns just three starters on the offensive side of the ball, uh, defensive side of the ball, and seven on the offensive side of the ball. They get Brandon Dawkins in, the transfer quarterback from Arizona. So that gives them a little stability, a little bit of talent there after losing uh, Richard Legault. Uh, this game could potentially have a lot of points scored in it. If the defenses aren't really clicking, uh, maybe the, you, know, you could see Indiana put up some points on Penn State and, and the same for Penn State against Indiana. But Penn State, at this point, I think the predictions are a hold up. But I've already beaten Ohio State and Michigan State. I just don't see them losing to Indiana, who's going to be borderline 5-7, and 6-6, six and six, trying to get to a bowl game. So a win over the Hoosiers. And then they play Iowa. If you remember last year, they were on the road in Iowa, and it, they had to win that game with no time left on the clock. They scored a touchdown with no time left to win 21 to 19. It was a perfect drive. It was a well-executed drive by James Franklin and Trace McSorley. It was really a thing of beauty. They did a great job going down there. It was a heartbreaker for the Hawkeyes. Uh, and as we all know, Iowa, one of the toughest places to play in the nation. So uh, it was more impressive that Penn State was able to go in there and get the win. This year, Iowa returning the favor, coming in uh, to Happy Valley, and one of the other toughest places to play in the Big Ten. And Iowa's going to have a solid team here with Nathan Stanley at quarterback. Remember, this is an Iowa team that beat Ohio State by 31 points last year. Of course, that was at Iowa, not at Ohio State. This year, Penn State's hosting Iowa. I just don't see the Hawkeyes coming in uh, to Happy Valley and getting the win here. I like their quarterback a lot, Nathan Stanley. I think they have talent on the offensive side of the ball. So once again, I think a lot of these games is, is going to rely on Penn State's defense. If they don't really start clicking, they could really struggle. Uh, and they do start clicking, they're still going to be dangerous, much like they were last year and the year before. I think they get a win over Iowa at home uh, because of their offense and because of home field advantage. And right now, they're undefeated. They're going to be, what is that, 8-0 going into Michigan. And that is a road game here. And if you remember the last time, I think it was last year, Penn State beat Michigan 42-13. to Revenge for the Michigan beat down that was put on them. The year before, in 2016, they lost 49-10 to in Ann Arbor. Now they're back at Michigan at the Big House with a team that returned 17 starters, has Shea Patterson, the transfer from Ole Miss at quarterback, Karan Higdon, Chris Evans, Donovan Peoples-Jones, and a very solid defense that was uh, only had one returning starter last year but still played extremely well. Now they returned nine. This is a Michigan team that is extremely dangerous. I think Penn State's undefeated season comes to an end here at the Big House at the very beginning of November where we see crazy things happen. I think Michigan gets a big win. They're no slouch against any team in the Big Ten this year. Uh, and I just, I just don't see Penn State going on the road and getting a win at Michigan. I think it's going to be closer than 49-10 and 42-13 to like we've seen the past two years. But I think Michigan ends up winning maybe by two touchdowns. And then they play Wisconsin, coming back here. And this is going to be another thing where I question Penn State's morale. Are they still going to be hyped up? It's only one conference loss. They had the tiebreaker Ohio, over Ohio State if needed. So, you know, how are they going to be able to respond in this game? They come to Wisconsin, the team that's going to be the heavy favorite in the Big Ten West. They return Alex Hornbrook. They have Jonathan Taylor, a Heisman, uh, potentially a Heisman finalist this year. Had a great season as a freshman in all five of their offensive linemen. Return. So he's going to have a solid line uh, to run behind for Jonathan Taylor and tons of protection for Alex Hornerbrook, who won uh, the quarterback competition at the Manning Passing Academy. I keep reiterating that because that's extremely impressive and shows how much for, uh, potentially this quarterback has come, even though he gets criticized a lot for throwing so many interceptions and not being able to come through clutch. This is a Wisconsin team that's actually their strength is going to be more so on the offensive side of the ball than the defensive side of the ball, as we've seen so many in the years past. And this is a Wisconsin team that, despite being at Penn State, I think gets a win over the Nittany Lions. 
thanks to their offense. And their defense is no slouch at all. They're still going to be a solid defense. They just don't have as many returning starters on that side of the ball, but should still be fairly solid there, uh, especially this late in the season. If they have any struggles early on, they'll be fixed by November 10th, right before the season ends. I think Penn State loses back-to-back games just like they did last year. Uh, last year they lost two on the road back-to-back. This year it's going to be one on the road, one at home. But against very solid teams in Michigan and Wisconsin, no, it's really not going to be a major upset there. Uh, these are against very, very solid teams that both have a solid defense and a very potent offense. And then they close out the year with two of the weaker teams uh, in the Big Ten East, Maryland and at Rutgers. Uh, Rutgers was a team that lost to Penn State last year uh, pretty handily. And I just... Don't see Penn State going on the road and losing this game. I really think Rutgers is going to improve on that 4-8 and record that they had last year. I think they returned 15 starters somewhere around there. Uh, and Chris Ash doing a good job with them. Maybe they'll get to a bowl game, improving on that 4-8. and I just don't see Penn State going on the road. Rutgers hasn't improved that much yet to beat uh, this Penn State team that still has plenty of talent. So a win for the Nittany Lions. And then Maryland to close out the year, uh, a team that Penn State beat 66-3 to last year. Uh, I don't think Penn Maryland's improved that much since last season. I like their quarterback situation, whether it's Tyrell Pigrome or Kaysom Hill, whichever one that is, I think they're going to be solid there. Upset Texas in the season opener last year, so that was impressive for the Terrapins. We were battled with a lot of injuries, but it is at home for Penn State. They wanted to finish the season strong, cap off a 10-win season, and I think they do so against Maryland there. And that's going to be another 10-2 and season for the Nittany Lions. Certainly nothing to complain about with the starters that they lost last year, including Barkley, who was so much of this offensive production and the schedule that they have to face this year. Pittsburgh, who's not going to be a slash, but shouldn't be too difficult, but that's a, still a road game that you have to be careful about. Ohio State, Michigan State, at Michigan, and then drawing Wisconsin out of the West. Uh, certainly, no, and, and Iowa, probably the second best team in the West. None of these teams are going to be easy for Penn State, so a 10 and 2 record would be extremely impressive. Another great ch- coaching job by James Franklin and could potentially get the Nittany Lions back to their third straight New Year's Six Bowl. So it would be a solid year for them, but unfortunately it would probably keep them out of the Big Ten Championship for the second straight year. But nonetheless, solid year for the Nittany Lions. I can see this really happening for them. I really think that those two are going to be their losses. Maybe they lose to Ohio State. Maybe they lose to Michigan State. But I don't see anything less than nine wins for Penn State this season. So another solid year and a great way for a lot of these seniors to go out. So as always, please go check us out on Twitter at Gridiron Expert, on Instagram at The Gridiron Expert, and always in here on YouTube. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you next time on The Gridiron Expert.